Sandy in perspective in Delaware, let's bring in David Legates, a climatologist at the University of Delaware. He's our first person this week and welcome. Thank you, nice to be here. Uh, let's take a look at some of the recent storms. Which were worse, Sandy, Irene, or any winter storm we've had in the last three years? It sort of depends on where you are. In some cases in Newcastle County, the winds are much higher, so there's a lot of more storm damage there. Some cases there are a lot of more of a coastal storm, so there's a lot of coastal erosion, a lot of wave action down there. So Sussex County takes the brunt. So and it really depends on where you are in Delaware, whether it's a coastal storm, an inland storm, whether it's a snowstorm. Uh, we've had we've had almost everything in the past decade. Okay. Well, over the last decade, I'm sure you put together a list of some of the worst storms. Uh, September 2003 was a tough time for Delaware uh, when you think about uh, storms Henri and Isabel. What was it or what were conditions like rather uh, that brought those two storms together? Well, Isabel was interesting because we were all watching it and paying close attention. It was a hurricane. Uh, it was potentially coming towards us. Ultimately, it moved a little bit farther west and it really became the, the classic storm uh, for the Chesapeake Bay and for the western shore of the Chesapeake. Uh, and Delaware, although we got a lot of wave action in Sussex, uh, it really wasn't as bad as it could have been. While we were watching that, sort of a several days earlier, the remnants, well, it was still Tropical Storm Henri, but the interesting thing was it never reached Hurricane, so we sort of paid, paid no attention to it. And it, it wound, found itself up over uh, Chester County, and then we had heavy rainfall associated with it, it sort of stalled, and overnight there was, I believe, about uh, eight to 10 inches of rain it fell. The next morning, uh, all this comes down to Red Clay Creek. Uh, it's, it comes across in Glenville. You've got the Wilmington Western Railroad that was decimated by it. You've got Glenville that was flooded out yet again and ultimately led to the state buying it out. Uh, and we had a lot of disruption up in northern Newcastle County. So with Henri, Newcastle County took the impact and then several days later, it was coastal erosion with Isabel. So as we take a look, uh, or as we talk about Sandy one year later, uh, I have to point out that this is one of the quietest hurricane seasons in recent memory. Uh, what is it about this tropical season that could have led to that? Uh, there's a number of things. Usually tropical storms get fired up when you have a lot of warm water and when you have something called a lack of upper level wind shear. It allows storms to essentially develop vertically and if you have a lot of upper level winds it tends to tear them apart. Is that a good thing? That, that's <laughs> a good thing to keep storms from forming if we have that. And we've had that in a number of years. I think over, since 1950 there have been about five years in which we've had no hurricane landfalls in the U.S. and they've all been in the 2000s. Uh, but not having a big storm season is both a benefit and a detriment. The benefit, obviously, is you don't get the coastal erosion, you don't get all the, the damage associated with it, but also you don't get a lot of the rainfall associated with it either. And so in many cases, the southeast requires sort of that rainfall that, to keep it going. And when you don't get those heavy rainfall events, you get a lack of precipitation. Let's take a look at the storm of 1962. Uh, every generation has a, a storm they can use as a benchmark. Uh, will we see anything like that in the future? Hopefully not, but there's no way to rule it out. I mean, 62 was a rare event. It, it lasted for five tide cycles. So we went through five high tides with this, this battering waves and it really sh reshaped a lot of the coast. Uh, I know my grandmother used to always refer to Hurricane Hazel in 54 and a lot of people remember it and it brought hurricane force winds into Delaware as well, even though it had made landfall down around Hatteras. So uh, there, there's always one of those big storms to, to, to remember, remember your childhood, I guess, with. Oh, what would you say about the uh, Valentine's Day storm in 2003? That was pretty bad. That was pretty bad, yes. Um, and I remember in particular back in 78, I'm sort of dating myself, but I remember <laughs> there was a very big snowstorm in 78 coupled with ice and uh, we almost weren't sure we were gonna get our senior year of high school finished. So from experience, uh, can you tell us, uh, do you sort of know when a storm is gonna be bad just by looking at it? You can sort of tell that a storm is going to become a major storm, whether it's going to make landfall, where it's going to make landfall, and how bad it's really going to be, you never know really until it sort of plays out. I mean, even with Andrew, you saw that this was a very big storm and it was headed right to Florida. Uh, it, it wound up not deviating and hit Florida head on. It was a major storm for Homestead in that region. Um, but 
the, the most of the other storms, they look big, but if they stay just enough offshore, they can just be a little bit of coastal disruption for us and not a big problem. If they come more inshore, we get higher winds, more coastal erosion, all of a sudden it's a storm to remember. Well, waiting till it plays out, is that a, sort of a dangerous thing? For well, you us? have to. I mean, in some cases, uh, the forecasts uh, are such that you're, you're never quite sure what these things are going to do. There are tropical storms that are coming into mid-latitudes. It all depends on whether there's uh, blocking mechanisms, whether there's frontal activity going on, what may actually help steer the things. Generally, when the storms are really big, they usually have enough oomph, as we say, to keep going. And so they sort of zoom on through mid-latitudes and sort of make their own way out. It's sometimes the small storms, like the Henri, that never became a hurricane, was always a tropical storm uh, that just never really became anything. And then it gets hung up in something in mid-latitude, it stalls, it dumps a lot of rain in an area, and you get flooding, and then it's a storm to remember. Okay. Well, thanks so much for your time, David Legates of the University of Delaware.